What's up, everybody? Jason here for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We just sold out 2022 Bowman Draft Baseball Jumbo. A box case break. Picketings number seven. And here we go, guys. I know, right? For real. <laughs> you guys are madmen. So I think Thursday, I think Tuesday we did three cases of five star, which was great, you know. Like at least a case a day, right? And then yesterday, I thought you guys went ham. We did four yesterday. But no. You guys were like, that's not good enough. I don't want to just do four. Let's do five tonight. So, we're doing our fifth five star tonight. After this. So, I mean, the way it's trending, like, are we going to do six tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I figured release day, you have to do it a lot. I think we posted up, like, eight of them, didn't we, on release day? But, wild times. And also, two guys, I was actually talking to uh, my wife earlier, because they were sorting out, uh, like, yesterday's or the previous day's jumbo. Just to save some time, guys, I am going to probably kind of skip the paper base. Uh, just because they, they do have the top load list. So, um, they know, of course, any and all of those three players are going to be penny sleeve to be top loaded. So, kind of just to save a little bit on time. Especially since we have another break sold out. I'm probably not going to skim. I'm just kind of skim through with the paper base. And then obviously when they sort it out, they'll penny sleeve and top load it. They're even, I think, penny sleeving up the, the inserts and stuff like that too. So, I mean, at the end of the day, everything's going to ship. So, don't worry. But just to kind of make this break go by a little bit quicker. And then once I'm done with this, I'll post up number 8. And then same thing when we're done with 5 star, I'll post up number 21. I think now it's pretty good to just do it that way now at this point.
God, those are some very ugly St. Louis Blues jerseys. One more, and then we'll go through the four cards, four boxes. should win with or without Jalen Hurts. They're, they're definitely the better team, but again, you know, you're not going to have Lane Johnson. I don't think C.J. Garner Johnson is going to be playing either. Um, even though I think he is designated for return from IR, but I don't think they'll play him. We're going to be down some key players, but I, I still think overall we're still better, so. Um, it's just more like I know Jalen's going to want to play and do everything in his power to play. But it's like, is it really worth it? Because, you know, what if he gets injured? Even worse, you know, than what he already has. Kind of like more just, well, let Gardner Minshew go out there, you know. Um, but then it's a little risky, right? You know, Cowboys ended up winning this week, as they should. Titans are so banged up. So it's like, you know, they're hoping the Eagles lose. Then it gets interesting, you know. Let's say the Eagles do lose. They can still clinch home field and the NFC East, but but uh, again, they would have to beat the Giants, and then that's where it gets tricky. Because I think if they were to lose to the Saints somehow, then that's where you do play Jalen Hurts in, in Week 18. Because Giants would, would have been a tougher opponent than opponent than the Saints. So, but yeah, I think they should just take care of business this week, and then rest all your starters in Week 18, and now you get another an extra week right to rest up. But, uh, it is still a little nerve-wracking, but I think it's just, you know, Eagles didn't play too well against the Cowboys and still only lost by, like, six. So, that's kind of positive. All the turnovers is what killed them, and it was fairly similar to the Washington uh, Commanders game. Yeah, but I, th I think the Eagles, I think uh, t Eagles, if anything, out of all the wild card teams, they sh the only one that can, that could uh, present damage or a little bit of, a little scare. Uh, Sonny, for the Angels, is going to be the Cowboys, really, by far. I think the Eagles can beat any one of those other wild card teams. Or I should say not wild card, but like yeah, yeah. I guess it is wild card, right? The, the ones that are not divisional winners. So it is going to be interesting, though. It's going to go down to the wire, right? Detroit Lions can get in. What are the Lions getting, guys? Damn, <laughs> be crazy time for Lions fans, man. Quez Watkins, I know, man, he's, he had a good start to the season, and then I think it kind of went a little downhill for him in that Commanders game when he, uh... Ooh, look at that! Tamar Johnson, that is a variation. Went downhill when he dropped that, or not when he dropped it, but when he, uh... tried to run up and, and get more yardage and then fumbled. But he's still a great player, though, man, but... Yeah, it's a little frustrating. We got, uh... Peyton for the Chicago White Sox.
De Jesus. Devontae Smith is so smooth, right? Devontae Smith, he's one of my favorite players, man. I have one. I bought his jersey earlier this year. He's he's so good. I love AJ Brown. Don't get me wrong. But Devontae, toe dragon, toe tipping, great route runner. People said he's a little too small for the NFL, and look at him now. Especially making those amazing catches and getting hit in midair, you know. All right, we got a Dustin Harris for the Texas Rangers. That's an orange, Invicta. Number 25. He is a great compliment to A.J. Brown. We're fortunate to have two receiver number ones now. And that's the crazy thing, right? You know, everybody always likes to talk smack. Oh, you guys could have had Justin Jefferson, and oh, you guys could have had uh, D.K. Metcalf. And for sure, we could have. You know, it just didn't work out that way. How he just, he messed up. But guess what? It, it, it didn't allow us, it, it, those mistakes allowed us to go get Devontae Smith in 2021. And then he made it up by trading our first rounder for A.J. Brown. And there you go. Erased. We don't need those guys anymore. Watson. And honestly, I, I, we talked about this before here. I, I don't know if... if uh, I think Justin Jefferson still would have balled out with us, but I don't know if he would have been as productive because up until now, the Eagles' offense didn't really revolve around like one receiver, right? It's always been a, like a two tight end type of set and, and stuff like that. So I don't know how much it actually would have worked out that way, but I'm happy with what we got now. Luis Angel Acuna. And an orange to 25, Caden Wallace for the Royals. Second round pick. Royals is uh, Peter. No, well, it, tell me, what, what, what was that about? What? Isn't that the funniest thing, too? Eagles draft Jalen Rager over Justin Jefferson, and then somehow how he gets like a fourth round pick from the Vikings for Jalen Rager. And I want to say he uses that fourth round pick on Robert Quinn. Although it hasn't really worked out, but he got injured, so I guess we can't really, <laughs> we can't really say too much about that because of injury. But rocker. How he's a wizard. He's the only dude I know that's finessed the Vikings with uh, Sam Bradford for a first round pick. Got a first round pick for Carson Wentz. Really? Interesting. Rager's not really one to like quit. Christopher, uh, that is a third round pick out of Santa Monica. <coughs> Eli De La Cruz. And another Caden Wallace. It's time to 150. So you got an orange, and now you got a blue wave. It's 
Perez Gonzalez. Our next box, box number three. Simpson and Jared McKenzie to 99 green. Fifth round pick. Robert Hassel. Yeah, Henry Mendez. And then we got Trevor Martin for the Rays. Tampa Bay Rays is Jason K. Was he, he was he, he was part of that Juan Soto trade? So that means they sent him, CJ Abrams, they sent a lot of players for Juan Soto. I guess I never really looked into it too much. Nazer Meal. Paper orange. And then we got Walter Ford to 250. Good color in this box. That's a second round pick as well. Seattle Mariners going to Peter. Jordan Beck, purple color match. What a crazy time for Washington, right? Like, you know, they win a World Series in 2019, and then, you know. Well, I think it was funny was that the year that they, they Bryce Harper left to the Phillies, they ended up winning without him. But it's just so crazy to think that in Washington, Juan Soto's not there no more. After them winning, like, in 2019. Just, like, three years later. Starting from scratch again. Jonathan Clays. Speckle. Mejia. And then Troy Melton to four ninety nine. Reggie Crawford. Cleaning house, I know. Henry Williams, Padres, Jason K.
And we got Cole Young, Seattle Mariners. That is a Chrome Prospect Autograph Green Refractor Parallel. And Mariners, that is going to Peter. Ignacio Alvarez, purple. All right, Coolio. Just like that, first four done. <laughs> That's funny. Just looking at his stats, you're just like, God damn. All right. Clay Aiken. You guys remember, uh, what, remember uh, what are the bench warmers? They go up to the rich guy's mansion. Because I don't know, I just figured like someone like Clay Aiken lived up here or something. <laughs> Clay Aiken.
Ovechkin with another goal today. Man, he's gonna do it, guys. I, I called it like, like back in like 2010, 2012. I was like, you know what, this dude is gonna fucking. This guy. Yeah, something like that. I think he's like a 805 now or 804. I don't know. Did they did they end up winning in overtime? No, it looks like they lost. And Alex Debrinka has been on fire lately for the Senators. Yeah, he has 22 goals already. The way he's going, he's going to probably score another 20 goals. We're not even halfway through the season. He's already at 22. So, I figure he's going to get 40. Right? So, if he's like 90 away, minus 20, he's down to 70. Again, he just needs to average like 35 goals a year for the next two years, and he's going to do it. You know? I mean, if he ends up scoring more than 40 this year, he gets to, like, let's say 50 somehow. I mean, I don't think he will, but I think 40 is pretty realistic. And then it just makes next year and the year after that easier. And, I mean, as long as he doesn't get a major injury and he doesn't show any signs of slowing down and he still wants to play, which I'm sure he does. Um, you know... I'm pretty sure he's he's gonna get there. Just let me fix this here. Yeah, he doesn't have many goals, but I think he's scored like at least five or six goals in the last like three games. Um So yeah, I'm I'm not saying that he's like Amazing, amazing, but I mean, he's still, still early in the season. But yeah, I mean, I think if you look at the stack sheets, I think he, I think he scored like four or five goals in the last couple of games. All right, guys, here we go.
Purple and Jack Brannigan. Yeah, and, and you know he wants to break that record, honestly. He's so close. To 50, Leonard. Like I said, as long as he doesn't get an injury or anything like that, he doesn't have look like he's slowing down anytime soon. I don't know, man. Some people make some people some people make scoring goals in the NHL easy, but man, it's, I'm pretty sure it's effing hard. <laughs> the way, at least as especially Ovechkin scores his goals, it's not like he's freaking you know doing all these amazing moves around people. He just has a hard ass shot, precise shot too. It's like he already knows where to put it in the back of the net. But still got it though. But I don't know. I feel like forty goals might be easier. I don't know. Forty homers seems like pretty hard. I mean, I guess the question is. I mean, I guess it's like in most sports, right? I mean, you're probably only gonna have like one guy that's gonna score like that many goals slash. That many, uh, that many play on the same team at least, right? All right, Dilo's getting into the stats. All right, tell me, seventeen players hit forty goals last season, and again, scoring has been going up relatively, uh, pretty good the last couple of years too, especially while all the points like McDavid and Drysaitel put up, and then, you know, you have other players every year stepping up too. How many players that hit forty home runs last year? Four players? Yeah, that's... A, yeah, that's a... I figured hitting home runs would be harder. Imagine that. Trout hit 40. Sneaky. Only played like 100 games. <laughs> and a red. Amador. One of five... For the Colorado Rockies. Um, this auto was Cade Horton. Cubs going to Greg. Milbrandt. Mizorowski. Timur Johnson. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it only probably was like five years ago, probably. So what has happened? Has has people just gotten much more skill in the NHL, much more skilled players in the NHL, or is it the goaltending too? I guess the rule changes actually kind of helped a lot too. And Judd Fabian to 99. Orioles.
Did I miss another auto? No, right? I said these names. Mozarowski and Fabian. Tyler uh, Schwetzer to four ninety nine. White Sox is Joe. Uh, Ryan Reckley. Mazur, Padres, oh, um, Orioles, that's Peter, um, Brewers, that's Michael, White Sox, Joe, yeah, I don't know if you, you see your teams again, Jason, sorry. Henry Williams for the Padres. And then Brooks Lee, which is Minnesota Twins. It's going to Peter. That's a class of 2022 autograph. Schultz That's a White Sox and more paper Two more boxes. And another redemption. Blue Wave. Prospect autograph, refractor parallel, Blue Wave. Jordan Beck for the Colorado Rockies. And then Emmanuel Rodriguez for the Twins. So again, Peter Twins and Rockies EA. Garaya's little variation. Yankees, that's Jason K. And another Judd Fabian for the Baltimore Orioles and Peter to 250. Paper. That's actually probably not bad at all. Kamar Rocker for Joe and the Rangers. And that is 5 out of 5, which was the third overall pick. Would love to be a red chrome, but red paper still not bad. Very nice. Tyler Stewart for the Mets going to Steven.
Drew Thorpe for the Yankees paper. That's Jason K. Ryan Reckley. Giant Swede. Alrighty guys, down to the final box. I'll do a little autograph recap here at the end. Curtis me for the Rays, Jason K paper. Miller and then Joe Lamp for the Cleveland Guardians, Ryan. Paper more Brewers Michael And an orange, Dylan DeLucia to 25 for the Guardians, going to Ryan. One more auto in here. And it's going to be Drake Baldwin for the Braves going to Jordan. in our day I guess was right behind that alrighty guys so let's get all the autos together Alrighty guys, so these are all the colors that we got out of here and of course some of the base first of those three players.
ton of different colors there. Got this nice one there. And then, of course, we got three colors that were pretty nice right here. Red, Amador, to five. Rocker, paper red, to five. And then a Tamar Johnson uh, variation. And autograph-wise, here we go. So we got for the Orioles there, Joe Fabian. Or Jed Fabian. Uh, uh, Schweitzer for the White Sox. Brooks Leaf, Twins Redemption. Jordan Beck, Blue Wave Refractor for the Rockies. Another Judd there. Tyler Stewart for the Mets. Joe Lamb for the Guardians. Another one for the Guardians there. DeLucia. Baldwin for the Atlanta Braves. Mensarowski uh, for the Brewers. Brannigan for the Pirates. Horton for the Cubs. McKenzie for Washington. Trevor Martin for Tampa Bay. Walter Ford there for Seattle. Troy Melton. Henry Williams. Redemption or autograph there for the Pirates. Redemption. There's Cole Young. That's a green refractor parallel for the Mariners. Christopher Paciola uh, for the Cubs. Caden Wallace, blue for the Kansas City Royals, and orange for the Kansas City Royals. Dustin Harris for the Texas Rangers, and Victor Orange. Palette for the White Sox, and Sonny for the Angels. There you go, folks. That was Pikachu number seven. Number eight will be in the store later tonight. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com.